All right, so now I'm going to talk about um, the different kinds of shadows that uh, my lights have. And I'm going to use these three, three, three light types as examples. So let me go ahead and start with the spotlight, and I'll just hide these other two. So let me go ahead and uh, turn on my little active render here. And let's just position this um, to get a nice shadow. Let me increase that code angle to get more. And I'll just adjust a couple of these settings. All right, so uh, right now um, the depth map is, is, is uh, enabled. So we have two kinds of lights. We have depth map and we have ray tree shadows. So I'm going to go ahead and start, start off with the depth map. Um, by default, the resolution is set to 512. And what this means is that our shadow is basically an image, uh, like a JPEG. And the resolution is 512 pixels by 512 pixels across. So that is a, that's a pretty small um, shadow uh, image. So you can see how, as we take a render, we can see all those pixels um, within that image. So we can go ahead and increase this. We can double that. And we'll go ahead and take another render. And you can see how uh, it starts to kind of smooth out just a, a little bit. And you, uh, you can keep increasing, but uh, that's going to keep uh, adding more memory to your renders, especially if you have 10 or 20 lights in your scene. Um, that can take a lot of memory out. So instead of just kind of... Uh, adding more resolution to smooth that out, uh, we have uh, a filter option, which means that it's going to go ahead and blur um, um, these, those edges. Like imagine the shadow map as a JPEG, and you put it into Photoshop, and you add a Gaussian filter, a Gaussian blur, then um, that's essentially what this filter size is doing. It's blurring out those edges uh, uniformly. So let's take a quick render with that filter. And you can see how it starts to smooth out those edges and give you a, a little nicer result. The problem with this is that um, this isn't how um, um, real life uh, shadows work. You can see how that um, blur is kind of uniform across this whole edge and right here. Whereas in, uh, a real light would kind of feather out even more and back here it would be real blurry and it would kind of get crisp as it comes along. Also take note of the shadow that's kind of bleeding out from underneath this cube it's kind of bleeding towards the light, whereas um, the shadow wouldn't normally kind of go towards the light, it would kind of um, go backwards. So um, keep that in mind when you're using shadow shadow maps. Um, you can use a, a general idea would be to use, like if you had a light straight above and you were to use the depth map with some blur, then it would give you a kind of a nicer result because the edges would all be blurred in all directions. And these other options are in case you're having some problem with um, you know, some of the bleeding, um, you can adjust um, these settings. But for the most part, just um, stick to the uh, resolution size and the filter size. Those are your best um, options for kind of setting up your shadow maps. Now let's go ahead and talk about the ray tracing. Now this is a, a more physically accurate um, kind of shadow. So if I were to go ahead and take a render, um, and you're going to see how nice and crisp these shadows are. Uh, keep in mind that when you're using Maya software, you're gonna have to go into your settings and go to this Maya software tab and go to ray tracing quality and make sure that this is uh, checkbox is checked on so that um, Maya software can render ray trace shadows. All right, so now we have some pretty nice crisp shadows, but what if we want to kind of blur those out and like a real world light? Um, this light radius option um, will help you kind of feather out those edges. So. This works in units, so if we want the light radius to be uh, five units across, then we would put that to five light radius. It's, it's essentially a ball of, of, of light that is a five unit radius ball. So let's take a render. Let's save this out so we can compare and take a render. All right, so you can see how those edges are starting to feather out, but they're trying to get real grainy. And so we need to increase our number of shadow rays because with one ray, it's, it's pretty grainy. So let's go ahead and increase that to maybe like 20 rays and take a render. And you can start to see how our renders start to get um, pretty slow and you can see why ray tracing are pretty expensive. But they do produce a nice result. So you can see how these shadows are, are pretty nice, um, nicely smooth and pretty accurate. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, let me show you another example of if we were to put this uh, light a real low and, and have a low angle. Let's take a render. All right, so you can see how uh, we get a really nice result. How it's really blurred back here, and as as we get towards that base, it gets real crisp. How a real light would work. 
So yeah, um, ray tracing is usually a higher quality um, shadow, but the trade-off is render time. Now, uh, my software can do ray trace shadows, but if we switch over to Mental Ray, um, this is a primarily a ray tracing engine, so it's more optimized for um, ray trace shadows. So if I were to go ahead and take a render with the Mental Ray render, you can see how much quicker this, this render is. Now we are getting a little bit more graininess because it does handle these shadow rays differently, but you can see the result 11 seconds versus you know 44 seconds is pretty close and Mental Ray handles these ray trace shadows uh, much better. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to uh, the next light. Um, I'm going to hide this one and we'll turn on our directional light. And oops, we'll go ahead and turn on the shadows. And I want to show you an example of um, using depth map with our directional light. So if, if I were to take a render, right now it's set to 512 pixels. 512 pixels. Let me take a render. And you can see um, how we get a, a pretty uh, pretty undesirable look. And this is because we're using Mental Ray. It does have some problems using depth map shadows. So let me switch over to my software and we'll take a depth map render. So you can see how this is kind of how what we would expect what we would expect from a low resolution and low filter size. But remember that um, the directional light covers the entire set. It doesn't it's not confined to a single area. It lights everything in the scene. So with that uh, in mind if we were to increase the scale of just this floor plane to a, a much higher um, size and we take a render, you can see how we start to get really pixelated and this is because that shadow map has to cover the entire plane which leaves less pixels for our shadows um, for these objects. So keep that in mind when you're using depth map um, with uh, directional lighting and you got to keep in mind the size of this of the set. So let's go over and switch over to Ray Trace and we don't have any kind of problems with that because um, it's kind of a 3D space um, shadow so uh, we're going to get some crisp results no matter how big the set is. So um, the light angle option is basically the same as the light radius in the spotlight. Um, so if we increase that to 5 and, and we take a render. You can see how it works. Um, getting some nice uh, edge blur um, and this is, this is a good option to use for sunlight because the sunlight does give a kind of a blurred shadow um, so this is a good option. Now this ray depth limit option um, what this means is that um, it, by default it's set to one meaning that it's casting one ray from the light. Um, this option gets important when you're dealing with uh, reflective surfaces. So let me go ahead and open up my uh, my hypershade, and let me adjust uh, this blend that's on these objects. Let me give it a bit of a reflectivity, and let's let's take a render. So you can see that we're getting some nice um, reflectivity in this in this material. But you'll notice that you know, we don't see any of the, our shadows inside the reflections. And this is because of that ray depth limit. Um, it's set to 1, so the only ray that is being cast is for shadows. But if you were to increase this to 2, now um, the limit is higher and we should be able to see those um, shadows within, within our reflection. Now we can't see our shadows within a reflection of a reflection. So if we wanted to see that, then we can increase this to 3. Um, but you want to keep, uh, you just want to keep that in mind of how many reflections of shadows you want to see. So this is what this option is for. All right, so let's switch over to um, our area light. Now the area light produces some um, pretty nice results when using ray tracing. It does do depth map shadows, um, pretty decent. But uh, area lights with ray tracing shadows are give you a lot of power and uh, some nice results. So let me go ahead and turn on those uh, ray trace shadows. And since, let me just take a render with some low quality settings. All right, so you can see um, some, a lot of that greeniness we have from the low amount of rays. Um, and it's kind of blown out here. I think it's because I don't have a decay on it. So let me turn on a, a bit of decay and increase this light. So let me go up to, uh, let's say, 20. And increase the shadow rays to, let's say, about 20 as well. 
And let me just kind of pick up this light and kind of give it a little bit more uh, height. And let's take a render. So you can see how um, these area lights give us some nice um, soft shadow results. And remember that these are uh, dependent on the size of, of the actual light in 3D space. So if I were to increase that, and let's take another render, and you can see kind of the result we get. All right, so increasing that light size has really blown out the image. So let me go ahead and just pull that back a little bit and kind of uh, give us some better lighting. And let's, let's, let's go ahead and switch over to mental ray so we can get some quicker renders with the ray tracing. And let's go ahead and just take a, a better render. So you can see we're getting some nice shadowing. We can increase those uh, shadow rays to get some um, better, uh, better quality. But that's basically it as far as um, the different kinds of lights. We have our shadow maps, which are basically um, images that are applied to the surfaces and then just kind of blurred with filters. And then we have our ray tracing, which are more accurate, but more expensive as far as uh, resources and render times. So, all right, let's go ahead and move on to the next exercise.